In this screencast, we're going to look at some best practices for code review using JetBrains Upsource. Firstly, it's important to automate as much as possible. It's best to save the valuable time of your human reviewers by using tools such as continuous integration servers like TeamCity to ensure the build compiles and automated tests pass. Upsource supports integration with other tools. It can do things like show the results of a build for each commit, so it's easy to see there's no need to review commits where the build has failed. Code reviewers should never have to worry about whether code compiles or passes easily automated criteria. Upsource provides code intelligence for Java, Kotlin, JavaScript, PHP, and Python. This means that when a reviewer is looking at code in Upsource, they can see red or yellow warnings if the automated inspections find problems in the code. As well as integration with build servers, Upsource also integrates with issue trackers like Jira and Utrack. So it's easy to navigate to the issue containing the details of what these changes are supposed to achieve. Now we've automated as much as possible to determine the quality of our code, we need to decide what's valuable for our human code reviewers to be looking at. Even taking away the checks that can be easily automated, like compilation, formatting, unit and system testing, there are still many different aspects of the code that a reviewer could be looking at. Selecting the important ones to check will depend upon the team and how and when they review code. For example, reviewing the design of a large feature right at the end of the feature implementation is either too late to make changes or could significantly delay the release of that feature. The goals for the team might be to make sure multiple members of the team understand this new piece of code, or it might be to make sure the design follows the application standards. It may be to ensure the quality of the code. This may involve not only checking the presence of tests, but also whether the tests are testing the right things. It may be to look for potential security issues, or it may be that you use code reviews to collaborate early on finding the right approach or design and iterate over the development. Whatever the goals are, the team needs to identify them early and apply them consistently. Note that many goals may be mutually exclusive, so it's not possible to check for everything in every code review. Assuming the team has a set of goals for code reviews, a developer is going to want to submit their code for review. Upsource lets a code author create several types of reviews manually and can even automate the creation of reviews. A developer can choose to add a commit to an existing review, to create a new review from a single commit, or to create a review that tracks a whole branch. This last option will automatically add all new commits on this branch to this review. If we select the simplest example, which is a code review of just this single revision, we can easily change our minds and have the review track all changes committed to this branch. We need to select reviewers for this review based on whatever our team guidelines are. This is going to depend upon the goals of the review. If the goal of the review is to pass some sort of gateway or quality check, there's likely to be an individual or pool of specialists who should check the code. If the goal is to share the details of the implementation with the team, the reviewers could probably be anyone, or maybe even everyone, on the team. Upsource can make the selection of reviewers easier. You can configure Upsource to automatically add reviewers or groups of reviewers based on certain criteria, such as the type of review and the author of the code. Upsource can also automatically suggest reviewers based on past review history. Code authors can help reviewers to understand the code and the decisions taken while writing it by annotating it with comments. Note that by leaving comments in Upsource rather than the code, the comments are potentially short-lived. The intention is that they only live during the review period, and their purpose is specifically for helping reviewer understanding. Although we'll see later that comments in Upsource can live outside of the context of a review, as a code author we'll generally use them to communicate our thoughts to a reviewer. Code comments can also include attachments, so if there's a specification or other documentation that's relevant to this part of the code, it could be attached. It's good practice to also label the comments so it's clearer what the purpose of the comment serves. We'll see more of this later. Now let's look at best practices for reviewing code. In this section, we're logged on as a reviewer and we'll be looking at what's important for someone performing a code review to understand. The most important thing for a reviewer is to review the code as quickly as possible. This is important as the code author is likely to be waiting for the results of the review and the longer it takes to receive feedback, the harder it will be to remember the context of the changes. You can see that Upsource shows the reviewer that these revisions pass the automated build, so it's reasonable to assume we can go ahead and review the code. The issue tracker integration here lets us see at a glance the summary of the bug or feature being addressed by these code changes. Upsource also shows us that the code author is online right now, so it's probably a good time to review the code, as it's more likely the author will respond quickly to any questions or comments. 
We can use reactions in response to someone else's comments as a shortcut to show we've read them and understand or agree. We should be writing our own comments about the code near the relevant sections. Feedback should be constructive and comments should be about the code and not personal about the author. It's important that a reviewer labels each of their comments with the relevant tag, so the code author can easily see if this comment is a showstopper, a question that needs answering, or maybe a nice to have. Otherwise, the author may be unclear about what to do to address the comment, or if it even needs to be addressed. Code reviews can be difficult for code authors, as we developers can be attached to our code. It's a nice idea to also leave positive feedback on the reviews, as well as noting changes that need to be made. We may also need to come back to some of the changes later for whatever reason. A good way to help us to remember where we were and best represent our progress is to mark a file as unread if we mean to return to it. Code reviews are naturally iterative. Even the best code shall elicit comments to be read. Upsource shows us what state our review is in. It's open and the reviewers are still in the process of checking the code. As the code author, we may want to use Upsource's progress view to see how much of our code a reviewer has checked. We can also see whether the reviewer is currently online, and if so, this is probably a good time to ping them directly via a review level comment to ask them politely if they can finish the review so we can make any required changes. Here we're logged in as the reviewer, and Upsource has notified us there's a new comment on one of our reviews. Since we're already online, we can respond quickly to this and finish checking the code. Once we're done, it's good practice to let the author know that we've finished the review. In Upsource, we do this by accepting the review if we're happy with the code as it is and it doesn't require any more changes, or raising a concern, which means that as a reviewer, we expect the author to answer our comments and possibly make changes to the code. Upsource shows the results for each reviewer with either a purple face for those who've raised concerns or a green smiley face on the icons of those who've accepted the review. As a code author, if there are concerns that need addressing, we should fix these as soon as possible in the same way that reviewers should review code as soon as possible. In our example, we're going to write a new integration test as requested by the reviewer and check it into the same branch that the original feature was developed in. Because this was a branch review, as soon as our changes were committed to the branch, they were automatically added to the review. And, of course, our build server compiles and tests the code once it's checked in. To make it easier to see which comments are still relevant or outstanding, it's a good idea for the person who started a discussion to resolve it when there's no further action to take. To show only the outstanding discussions, we can then hide the resolved discussions from the review. Given we've now added some changes to the review, we'll respond to the comments the reviewer made. We added code to address the first comment, and the second comment was flagged as not being a showstopper, so we could use a reaction to acknowledge this point. But since we want the reviewer to understand that we have read the comment and hope to do something with this knowledge in the future, it may be more expressive to write a more complete response. Our own comment poking the reviewer has been addressed, so this can be resolved, and we can leave a reaction to thank the reviewer for nice feedback. Once again, it's a nice idea to annotate the code with comments, questions, or ideas, so the reviewer understands the thought that went into the code and perhaps ask for suggestions. Now changes have been made to the code in this review, we can look at it again as the reviewer. Note that adding new code to the review resets the state for the reviewers, so they have to once again select whether the code is accepted or if they've raised a concern. Upsource also resets any files that have been changed to unread status, so as a reviewer, we know that we only need to look at the files that are in bold. All the other files are the same as the last time we looked at them. Therefore, we'll take a look at just the files that have changed, we'll respond to any comments or discussions on the changes, and we can also make more comments if we need to. In this case, the changes address our original concerns, so we won't make any further comments. We can resolve our original comment that asks for the new test, since this has been done. We'll also resolve any other discussions that don't need any further action. When we've done this, we'll see there are no outstanding showstoppers, so we can accept the review. Probably the most important part of the review is understanding that the code is good to go and closing it. Without this step, the code the author has worked so hard on is living in limbo and not delivering any value to anyone. Once again, it's important the team has decided in advance the criteria under which all reviews are considered closed. Should it be when all reviewers have accepted it, or just some subset? If there's a subset of reviewers, is it important which ones accept, or is it purely a number, for example at least two out of three reviewers? And what do you do if one or more reviewers have raised concerns? Do they all need to be addressed, or can some reviewers be overridden by experts or by a majority? Whatever your team decides, these standards should be applied consistently across all reviews. 
Upsource is flexible enough to allow any reviewer or author to close a review whenever they want to, which means it's down to them to apply the rules decided by the team. Once a review is closed, this is usually the time to merge or publish our changes. Again, it's up to the team to decide when this is done and by whom. If the project uses Upsource's integration with GitHub, the code can be merged via Upsource itself. Closing a review doesn't necessarily mean that all the discussions go away. Discussions that have not been resolved live on in the code. So if we come across this code later, we can see these unresolved comments. And it might be at that time that we do something about them. For example, we can use them to track possible tech debt or potential refactoring. We've looked at some best practices for code review and how to apply those inside Upsource. It's important to automate as much as possible. Ideally, your code review tool will show you the results of automation performed using other tools, such as a build server. Upsource also provides the ability to automate a lot of the code review workflow and has code intelligence for Java, Kotlin, JavaScript, PHP, and Python, so code reviewers can focus on the things that only human reviewers can do. The team needs to understand what's the purpose of their code reviews and apply standards consistently across all the reviews. This might mean having a checklist of things to look for in reviews, or it might be a set of rough guidelines. It also means knowing who is responsible for reviewing code in which sections of the application, and stating how it's decided that a code review is complete and the code can be merged or published if it hasn't already been. During the review, it's important to respond in a timely fashion as both reviewer and author to minimize the cost of the context switch between whatever you're working on and the code under review. And it's important as a reviewer to be clear about what you expect the code author to do in response to comments. Should the code be changed, or is it merely a comment to learn from and apply in the future? Most importantly of all, the goal of a code review is to have the code pass the review and make it into production. Code under review is usually code that's not being used, and code that's not being used is not adding any value to the application or to the users. Thanks for watching. You can find more information about Upsource and about code review practices on YouTube, on the website, and on the Upsource blog.